Ah, it is bright. <laughs> What's going on, guys? I need some sunglasses. Uh, we're on day three now of having all this fresh snow, and we are fixing to get a second round. We're supposed to get like three to six more inches. Um, we took the Tacoma to town earlier. We went to go look at our local lake. It was frozen over solid. It's pretty cool. I did. I put the uh, GoPro on the front bumper, and when Rachel went to work this morning, it was 15 degrees, negative, negative, negative 15 degrees. But what I'm saying is, I put the uh, GoPro on the front bumper, and we went to town a while ago. I don't remember what the temperature was, but I don't know how far we made it. But whenever I made it to town, it had already shut off. Uh, I'm using the GoPro right now to film, and I did yesterday as well. And it shuts off every so often because it gets so cold. The big camera won't last for no. a few minutes. Right. Uh, Dutch, he has the same camera as we did, and Daniel had the same one. I think he just recently got a new one. But the Canon cameras, they last like 20 minutes out here. And when you're filming, it just don't last at all. It just turns your screen purple. You lose all your uh, data on the card, and all the footage is wasted. So. That's no good. So Skeeter's over there making some yellow snow, I see. <laughs> we'll, we'll go over there and talk what about the gate and stuff here in Jeez. just a minute. Um, I want to show you guys. So we kind of got just a uh, little bit more wood supply, a little bit of reserve on the back porch. Uh, we keep some in the garage as well. That's always dry. But we go through it so fast that we just put this on the porch and try to keep it dry because just like this snow here, it's a, we only got about five or six inches. But pulling this gorilla cart through there, it's not too fun. It does work great. But we're supposed to get like uh, three to six more inches and we don't want to have to try to pull the cart through it and worry about it at the last minute. So. Yeah. It's taken two of us to push it and pull it. Let's go walk over here and show them the gate. So we have a automatic gate. Most of you that have been following us here on the channel know that. And when it ices over, when it snows, that's another problem you got to deal with. Mojo's over here waiting for us. It is, that's what we're doing. It's almost nighttime. It's in the evening. So Rachel and I is coming out here to feed everybody a second time today. But we got all these piles, little bit of piles of snow. We got, a, snow. got a lot of yellow on there from the dogs. But anyways, what I did is I brought the Kubota M59 over here and I had to clear away the snow from the gate. But it's been working really good. As far as the gate functioning. Well, I had Without to unhook it because this Ghost Controls, it works pretty good, but it's just so slow right now when it's so cold. So last I just, week during the ice storm, it worked really well, though. Yeah, it didn't have any problem last week. I mean, week. it was covered in ice, and every time I hit the button, it opened. It was a little slower, but it opened up, so. Well, anyways, that's that's that so that's just another tour you got to do here i'm not going to say that's related to the farm but when you have a farm you usually have gates so i see you big guy we're fixing to get your food he's been out there oh skeeter's gonna get him look come here <laughs> where are y'all going skeeter don't know. <laughs> they don't know all right so you ready to go feed i guess so i got a little treat in my pocket so we told you guys in a couple videos back we constantly are trying to take the dogs some warm food. What are you doing? What are you doing? Are you to kind of help them uh, have some energy to burn up some heat to warm themselves up. And uh, yeah, you smell it, don't you? So what I got here when I when I went to town earlier, I grabbed some of these quarter pound bar s hot dogs and put them in the microwave just for a little bit. It is just a little snack for them that is easy to warm up. It's got a lot of fat in it. And I'll give Mojo two and I'll give Daisy two. And earlier I cooked them some scrambled eggs and they always love that. They've been eating a ton of stuff that we've cooked on. Leftover stews. All kinds of good stuff. I mean anything and everything we've tried to keep in them. Here I'll give you the camera. I'm going to grab some feed Do you trust them. me with the camera? Just don't fall again. <laughs> Hey, I saved the camera. To, you need to update everybody on your falling. Oh yeah, I'm fine. I was sore a few days. Uh, after my feeling come back in my legs, <laughs> I could feel it was a little sore. So I just took some ibuprofen. I was fine. No big deal. But yeah, 
I was able to hold the camera up and not fall on it, so that's a plus. Look, we got icicles now. Oh, yeah. What was the temperature before we came out? 24 right now. So, this morning, like we said a while ago, on my way to work this morning, it was negative 15. My car said negative 15. And I got a picture that Kevin may throw up here of that. Uh, and then now it's 24 degrees. Yeah. And I was going to so, talk about something real quick. So I did a little experiment. So I'm, I'm not real familiar with diesel engines and stuff like that. But we have had this tractor for a long time. And then we got the bigger Kubota. It's a diesel engine as well. Then we got the uh, Ram 2500, the three quarter ton Cummins diesel that we use on the farm. It's always parked in the garage. So everybody says you need to put the anti gel blah, 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 chemical stuff in your diesel when the temperatures drop so far below freezing. And uh, they're not lying. I did put it in the truck. I put it in the Kubota M59 in the backhoe and I stored it in the garage or in the shop. I did not put it in this Kubota L3300 on purpose because I wanted to see if it really wouldn't start. And uh, let me show you guys what it does. This is what happens when you do not treat your uh, diesels accordingly. Let the go light go off there. Of course now the, the battery's low, but It'll just turn and turn and turn. And if you do not treat your diesel machinery, anything that you have that runs off of diesel fuel, especially tractors, uh, what they do is they make an anti-gel that you just pour in there. It's like a fuel additive, a fuel treatment, and it keeps that diesel from gelling up. What happens when the temperatures fall below freezing is your diesel turns into like a jelly and it gets all up in the filter and then it just does not flow very good in the fuel system and then it's going to do like that it ain't going to start so i just wanted to share that with you guys for those of you that don't know that don't uh go out to your truck that's sitting outside in the freezing temperature and expect it to start if it's a diesel <laughs> without treatment he just burped you, in my face you waiting for mama to fall yeah so he can help me up <laughs> <laughs> all right here you go hey why'd you he's trying to steal daisy's food look at that skeeter he's freezing skeeter that's daisy's He's you get to sleep in shivering. you get to sleep in the house all right here you go <laughs> so <laughs> skeeter he acts like he's starving i swear <laughs> are you trying to get mojo to play huh been playing. all right here we go don't want no goats out again oh i know better to, than to chase them this time Daisy. Daisy, I got something for you. <gasps> Daddy's got a treat. If you come over here where there's more light and <laughs> Well, I would if Daisy would get out of my way. Okay. Come on. She won't let me walk. Come on. Oh, look, she's got another little nest under there, or somebody does. They've ate quite a bit of this hay from the last time. Yep. There's another little burrow. All right, you ready, girl? Daisy's been doing really good in this weather, surprisingly. She is very short-haired, but she seems to like it. Looky here. Looky here. Oh, boy. You want this? It's nice and warm. Here, let me break it for you. Warm you up. Huh? Warm your belly up. These are some big old hot dogs, ain't they, girl? Are you even eating them? Or are you just swallowing them? Huh? You even eating them? Yeah. So, guys, this is just a little cheap way, little quick way to bring them some warm treats for their belly. I know hot dogs ain't the best thing to be giving dogs, but you can buy a whole pack of, like, 20 or 30 of them for, like, 6 bucks. And when you're busy like we are... Put them in a Ziploc baggie, throw them in the microwave while you're getting your boots on, grab them and come out here and they're still warm. They like the taste of them and it's meat and it's got fat in it. It'll help her, help her 
warm her belly up and uh, give her some energy for tonight. All right. Daisy approves. You know what he says. The other one's from Mojo. Okay. Everybody looks good. I don't see anybody with runny noses or anybody sneezing or coughing. I don't know why one sock's over here. She found the, the feed bucket. But everybody looks good. It's it's surprising, guys, how much a difference being inside a building is and being outside in the wind. Like the wind chill was last last night or this morning, the temperature got down to negative 15, and the wind chill was like negative 29. But if you're out of the wind chill, that that knocks off like what 14 degrees. So, anyways, these buildings are a lifesaver when it comes to this livestock. Like we say in all the other videos, ours is not used to living up north or having these extreme frigid temperatures. Look at these teenagers over here. They're playing, king of the mountain. Yeah, they need to quit playing on their hay. They need that hay. Well, they don't know any They're better. They're down to one bell, so they better uh, save it. <laughs> all right, girl. You got feet in your, in your bowl too, okay? She wants lovin's. I know it. So we've kind of been a lot of Oklahoma and a lot of other states have been living in like di disastrous conditions, I would say right now. So they are doing, what is it called? Shutting off the power? Yeah, they're doing the rolling. Uh, What's it called? The rolling blackouts. Rolling blackouts. Yeah. So this morning I went to work, get there. And then shortly after I get there, the power shuts down. Cell towers go down for some reason, I don't know. And of course our generator wouldn't cook, kick on. Yeah. So it was kind of a disaster. And then when I pull up to work, right in front was like a roaring river because a water line had busted up up the road. And they had several oh, busted sweet. water lines. <laughs> My brother, his house, several of his lines busted. Um, so people are having to deal with crazy disaster type situation better eat girl with no water no power yeah it just it just it's just bad adds on to the frigid temperatures exactly to have to deal with the everything. snow is really not that big of a deal for us but the low very frigid arctic blast temperatures yeah. is what has been so dangerous we've been really fortunate here we've kept water um, we've kept power. Now the kids' um, heating unit upstairs did freeze up last night. <laughs> they both woke up and was like, we're freezing. Well, it wouldn't be a big deal if they'd open the door because well, we got a wood stove and everybody knows heat travels up. Right, but the kids... Is No. The kids... I told them to shut the door for some reason. I don't know why. That was kind of my fault. Peter, quit eating this goat feed. Come on. Oh, it's cold. So, yeah. They were freezing this morning. Kaya got up and crawled in bed with me. And I didn't sleep a wink last night because I was up all night worrying about the animals. And I know a lot of homesteaders and farmers and ranchers they probably have a lot of uh, sleepless nights during this kind of weather because they're up worrying. I know I was. I'm sure people up north, they get used to it and the animals get used to it and it's just the way of life. Especially like Alaska. Yeah. <laughs> There's Mo. You ready for dinner? He's always ready. He got warm cornbread this morning for breakfast, and I don't know what all, when after I went to work. When's the next snow moving in? In about three hours. We're supposed to get how much? Three to six inches. Three to six inches. Is the battery still doing good? I don't know, let me check. 60%. You just thought Mojo was white. <laughs> He's vanilla colored. He's dirty. 
him and Skeeter. <laughs> Come here, boy. I wish I would have filmed the baby goats while ago. Granger and Earl. They were running as fast as they could and jumping as high as they could all through the snow. It was hilarious. Mona, you're supposed to be eating, buddy. <sighs> He'll eat. So one thing I wanted to explain, if you guys live somewhere in like Hawaii or South Florida, somewhere where you don't get snow, take doing your chores every day, which isn't no big deal when you don't have snow, and then add about five to six inches of snow and it makes it 10 times harder and you get 10 times tireder trying to walk through all this stuff. With extra layers on. With extra layers and these big boots, you get tired a lot faster, I promise you that. I'm already out of breath and I ain't done nothing but what do you think walk. Of that? That's a quarter pound on the hot dog. Oh, you just stick it. <laughs> Look how he stuck it in the ground. <laughs> oh, Mojo. Eat that hot dog. He's like, it's too hot. I'm going to cool it off a minute. The goats are like, what else you got for me? Mojo, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it ain't hot. It's warm. So I don't want to burn his mouth. <clears throat> What is he doing? He wants you to break it up like he did daisies. Don't bite me. You know, he was kind of a picky eater the other night when I gave yeah, him the stew. Yeah, he's been picky because we've been spoiling him. That's what he wanted, huh? Yep, see? Tastes said, better when it's in pieces? He said, you did daisies. He didn't know that. <laughs> they talked. Look, there's the babies eating. Aww. Aren't they cute? <laughs> yeah, I should have got out here a little earlier so I could film them playing. You know, baby goats. <laughs> which one's Granger and which one's Earl? Granger's the white ears. He's got dark ears. Earl's got dark ears. Granger Earl's has got white. dark ears and dark legs on the front. Aww. You're doing a good job, Mama. Yeah, she is a really good mom. So I'm keeping extra feed in here at all times. And one thing that I have noticed is, which is a good thing is, it has drastically cut down on their hay consumption. So I'm feeding them twice a day, a lot more quantity, and it's cut down on the hay consumption. Like over in the Kiko Spanish barn, they have got that hay bale eaten down to nothing in less than two weeks. And that's to be expected. But we only got one more round bell left here on the farm. So by feeding them an extra ration a day, that's that's drastically cut down on the hay consumption and it's giving them a lot of energy. Because one thing about this goat feed we get, it does have a lot of cracked corn in it. And they claim the cracked corn adds a lot of energy. So that helps you burn up whatever that keeps your body warm. What's that noise? Birds. All right, so let's go check on the turkeys. I cannot believe that we have not had a turkey sickle yet because these turkeys, they don't have heat lamps. They don't have nothing. They just have this little barn they're in. And a lot of times they sleep out in the open without even a roof on them. So it's crazy. Hey, Shadow. What do you know, girl? I'm pretty sure she's going to be next to kid. Probably so. She's getting even bigger. Well, she's had a lot of trouble. Like, I'll notice all the other goats running back and forth. You don't get in a hurry. <laughs> she tries, but bless her heart. She just don't have the get up and go. I know these water heaters are a lifesaver. Yeah, definitely. They're, standing, they're taking turns standing on one leg. One leg, one foot gets cold, so they stand on the other one and pick the other one up. Good girl. I'll put you some feed in the barn too. Butter fast eat your food. So we did put this tarp up like we showed you the other day. Well, I don't know if that video's come out yet, but we put this tarp up to try to block some more of the wind. And just leave them a good pile. You can go out there and kind of uh, 
Yeah, we're doing good. But they got roots and stuff to get their uh, feet off the ground. But what's weird is a lot of times at night, they come out here and sleep up here rather than sleeping inside. I don't know why. But you can see their combs and stuff don't get frostbit. Like a chicken, if they stayed out here, their combs would be black the next day from getting frostbit. It's a weird deal. This turkey pen was fabricated by Kevin and Rachel. <laughs> yeah. Everything here on the farm was built by us. <laughs> Almost everything. Oh, I can't get the shut. Here, I'll get it. Get it? There. Kevin built the latch that I couldn't get shut. <laughs> He's responsible for that. So we had to come in here and get rid of the eggs because they were all busted, frozen, weren't they? So I'm putting some feet up here to where the chickens can only get. Cause they roost up here in the rafters of this barn but the goats are sharing this barn right now with the chickens and if i just put the feed down on the ground or in an actual chicken feeder the goats would just tear it up and eat all the feed look so at that put... above your head oh, look yeah. how much snow that is. i know <laughs> but anyways you can see here leave that feed up there like that and uh the goats can't get it and the chickens can get all they want that's a mess in here well, at least it's keeping them warm. It is, it is. All right. And a lot of people ask us why we don't feed these goats in the barn. Well, for one thing, I can't... There, You can see here, this barn's not really big enough to put that hay uh, feeder in here. And if I did, I wouldn't be able to get a uh, round bell in here. Because this, I'm six foot tall, and this is just barely taller than me. And by the time you had the feeder, it's going to be a foot and a half, two foot off the ground. And the second thing is if I had the uh, feeder in here all the time, it don't leave them a lot of room to lay down and all that. This isn't a real big barn. That's where they primarily sleep. And two, by having it out here, we kind of have it in the front of our house looking out our big windows. And that allows us to kind of keep an eye on everybody during baby watch, especially to... Uh, that way we don't have to come out here every five minutes and check on everybody because usually... If it's cold and not snow on the ground, they'll hang out uh, here like all the time anyways. So by having the feeder out there, I just like it way better. Now, if it's like springtime and stuff like that, I'll bring buckets and stuff and feed them in here. But usually we don't feed them that far into spring, just in the cold weather. We just, this barn is a lot smaller than our big barn. We just don't yeah. really have the room. It's not set up. Now, if we had to, we could get, you know, we could hang our little hay hay racks up on the wall and feed them like that but it works out fine and they've done excellent in it little guys are munching on some hay It's amazing how fast these guys grow. Shadow, you're a good girl. All right, you ready to wrap this video up? Me and Mojo's holding hands. <laughs> Aren't we? Are you a ladies' man, Mo? He's a he's a sweet talker. Yep. Aren't you? I don't know how much you guys can see across the uh, creek there, over on the other hillside. So it's covered in uh, snow. It's pretty to look at, but yep. not fun to be. So I would do more drone footage, but my phone's a couple years old, and when I bring my phone outside, the battery like goes to it zero crashes. so fast. And the last two times I was flying my drone, I think I had like 40% on my battery, and I thought I was good because you got to use your phone as the controller to fly these DJI uh, Spark drones. Well. That's fine, it usually works good. But the last two times, the temperature has been way below freezing. And uh, most recently yesterday, 
I was outside flying it trying to get some drone footage while it was snowing and everything. You guys will probably see that in my last video. Um, anyways, all of a sudden my drone's like almost three quarters of a mile away and my phone goes dead. So I lost all sight of my drone on my phone because you use your phone and it the drone sends your phone the signal of the footage that it actually sees with its camera. So I'm in the dark, so I have to raise my drone. I just have to start going real high and I finally could hear it and had to kind of direct it into the direction that I thought I was going towards the house. You were flying blind. <clears throat> Pretty much. <laughs> Luckily I got it back because these drones ain't cheap and they do have a, a uh, emergency plan. They do know once they get down to a certain battery level, they automatically say returning to home and it calculates where it's at, the distance and the wind and all this, that it has enough battery to return back to its starting point on GPS. So that is a little safety thing in there. But I, I do want to get a new drone anyways because this one, the battery life isn't real great and uh, the distance, it can't go a long way. So I'd like to be able to go a little further. And I'm just watching this mama. She's walking to the barn right there, that white one you guys can see her. Her udder is getting really swollen, so she is going to be really, uh, she's going to be giving birth here probably within the next couple days, I'm going to say. Hopefully she can hold out a few more you days. Can, you can kind of see how her legs are bowed out because her udder is getting so big. So anyways, we better wrap this video up before this battery got, goes dead. I think we got 23%. Uh-oh. Anything else we need to talk about? Oh, you know me. I like to talk. Guys, don't forget to Not check really. on... Your friends, your family, the elderly, your neighbors, everybody. Uh, you know, there's always someone out there that's not going to reach out to someone when they do need help. So if you know someone that might need help, just if, you, if they're on your mind, just reach out and give them a text or call them or something. Because you never know. You might, you might be the one that saves their life or helps them out a great deal. Exactly. So we appreciate you guys watching and sticking with us. And we love all your uh, positive and kind comments. No Definitely. Doubt. Uh, check us out on Instagram and Facebook. We post some different things here and there. Uh, I can't think of nothing else. No. Like I'm you so said, we love you guys. Thank you so much for the support. Hope you're staying warm. If you're not subscribed, subscribe. Like this video. Leave a comment. And we'll see you next time. Thanks, guys. Nope, the babies are starting to hop now that we're getting off the video. Oh, of course. <laughs> now they're playing.